All saltwater fishermen know this situation well, looking out over the water talking about whether the fish are there or not. Well, we've placed underwater cameras in the areas we fish, so we can see schools of sea trout passing by. In every situation, we've used underwater cameras to follow all that goes on underwater as we fish. We shall see small schools of sea trout in shallow water and amazing scenes as schools of sea trout forage as we fish in the same area. In detailed close-ups and stunning underwater photography, we cover the sea trout's most important prey. We take a look at the flies and how they're fished in different situations. We follow the fly fisherman closely and join him even in the most intense moments. Oh, yes! We will see sea trout in low water during the night and join in on night fishing during summer. Generelt så tager jeg fluen sådan lidt lidt rask ind. Da. Da var den. Ah, det er skønt jo. We join experienced fly fishermen on different locations during all four seasons, all the time with underwater cameras in front of us, adding new dimensions to our experiences with saltwater fly fishing for sea trout. We start our autumn fishing on a nice stretch of open stony coast and we've deployed our underwater cameras. There's a slow current and the cameras show lots of sculpins. With the help of our cameras we will see both the sea trout and its prey in shallow water. Throughout the film we will cover the prey as good knowledge of what sea trout eat and the behavior of prey provides a solid base for technique, choice of fly and inspiration for the creative fly tire. Here, the occasional sand eel passes by. Sand eel are ferocious predators, and the sculpin make their escape. Sea trout are more or less omnivorous, and even small soft-shelled crabs are not safe. This old moss-covered crab is probably the only animal in the low water coastal zone that's safe from the sea trout. But even if they are omnivorous, they also become selective. They're not constantly feeding and sometimes sea trout become quite selective. Sculpin are among the most common fish in the low water zone. These are sand sculpin, which live most of their lives in or on the sandy bottom. These specimens are around 5 to 7 centimeters long. Although a very common species, they're not often eaten by sea trout due to the very fact that they dwell on the bottom. Spotted sculpin are pelagic and are found both as single individuals and in schools. They range in color from light to dark and are only found near vegetation where they quickly seek cover. They feed on plankton, among other things, and move in short, fast jerks. Sticklebacks are found everywhere and are an important prey for sea trout. The spikes on their back are raised when they feel threatened. They almost always occur in schools, sometimes very large ones. 
they are pelagic and schooling is their most important weapon against predators such as sea trout. A single sea trout on the hunt doesn't stand good chances against a school of bait fish, but here we are witnesses to a commando raid against a school of stickleback from a small school of sea trout. First, the sticklebacks become uneasy and they begin escaping. They probably gather in a tight school. Behind, five to six sea trout emerge, and then a sea trout enters from the side and finally a sea trout form the rear guard. Let's just see that again. This is one of the reasons we often see sea trout in small schools or groups. They work together as they forage. Another common prey on low water during the autumn is sand eel. Here, quite small, seven to eight centimeter long specimens, which sometimes form huge schools. Larger specimens usually come in alone or in small schools. Here, a school of sand eel followed by a sprat. During autumn, myriads of gamaras, shrimp and isopods hide in the vegetation in the low water coastal zone. The crustaceans are probably the most important prey for sea trout. We've just begun filming and there are already sea trout in front of us. At least eight or nine sea trout slowly cruising by, but Thomas doesn't see or feel any fish even though he's fishing in the very same area. Thomas is fishing a large, visible, generic fly. The fly imitates shrimp, sculpin and other bait fish. Stickleback swim in short jerks as well as in a slow, smooth manner. Close to the bottom, we see a sculpin, which often swim in short jerks. When retrieved quickly, the fly imitates a small bait fish quite well. When fished slower or when sinking, it serves as a shrimp imitation. This is a good all-round fly that works in most situations. During the morning, the weather changes, which often has a positive influence on the fishing. In calm water, sea trout often show themselves on the surface. They rarely forage along the bottom and prefer to find prey in the middle or top of the water column. Bait fish or a shrimp lost from the school swimming high in the water are easy prey for sea trout. Sea trout often reveal themselves with a swirl or a ring on the surface when they forage just below the surface. It's very important to watch out for surface activity. Sight fishing to spotted fish can be very effective, but keeping an open eye on the surface is important at all times. Og øh, den måde jeg griber det an på, det er, at jeg faktisk øh, lægger fluen lige oven i hovedet på fisken, og så trækker jeg hurtigt ind. Og det plejer altså at udløse et hug. Surface activity is most common during summer and autumn, but it happens all year. And throughout this movie, we will see on several occasions that a cast to a sighting results in a take. It's vital to observe and stay focused and present the fly as quickly and precisely as possible to the fish. Ah, den er fin den running her. Lad os nu lige se om der ikke er en.
The underwater cameras are showing activity now. This fish wasn't hard to see, it simply jumped out of the water. Den her fisk, den var lige ude af vandet en meter foran stenene her, og så, øh, så lagde jeg lige fluen ud, og trak 10 gange i den, og så sad den der. Så. Ej, nu er den ikke, fordi den er så stor, den har der nåle. Nå, det er en blank fisk, så det er en af dem, jeg skal have at spise. Der venter altså en fisk igen. I den så fin ud, den der med. We are fishing the tidal channel on an inlet. It's early spring and there will be both fresh, shiny fish as well as fish that have just spawned. Thomas is fishing two flies. The point fly is a bluish marine worm imitation and the dropper is a small shrimp fly. The flies seen in the movie and the patterns can be found at www.wideopen.dk. Both flies are tied in a loop knot we use the so-called Rapala knot. Begin with a normal overhand knot approximately two inches from the point. Thread the line through the eye of the fly and pull it up right next to the overhand knot. Twist the tag end around the main line two or three times. No more though, otherwise you'll not be able to pull the knot tight and make a small loop. Simply feed the tag end through the overhand knot. Note that it only goes through the small loop. Pull on both the main line and tag end to close the knot and finally tighten by pulling the main line. This loop knot is an important detail. The fly moves freely in the loop and is not inhibited by the leader. Let's look at an example. Below, the fly is tied on using a traditional knot. Above, we've used a loop knot. As the fly is retrieved, the top one moves a lot more. The loop knot also allows the fisherman to use a fairly heavy leader for small flies. You can see more about the knot on www.wideopen.dk. We've placed our camera at the edge of the channel we're fishing. The water is below four degrees and there's little prey this time of year. A few shrimps and a chance for sculpin and sticklebacks. 
Some species of marine worms are also active this time of year. Når jeg fisker med de her børstormsfluer, som jeg bruger her, så tjekker jeg dem hver gang, at jeg er inde i en nyt kast. Det vil sige, at jeg har ikke op i hånden, men jeg prøver lige at lade dem glide igennem vandet, så kan man på den måde kan man altså godt se, om, om halen har hægtet sig omkring fluen. Sometimes Thomas uses a line tray, but usually he gathers the shooting line in two large loops, which he holds in his mouth. Hop, hop, der vendte en der. Den tager jeg lige næste, den her. Jæt! Hvad var den? Ej, der var jeg ikke med. Det jeg gør her, det er, at øh, jeg fisker sådan i lange, rolige træk. Og øh, normalt fisker jeg min flue hurtigt, men, øh, men lige på det sted her ved den her vandtemperatur, der, der skal det altså ikke gå så stærkt. The water was almost still when we begun, and Thomas is just waiting for the tide to turn. Nej, den er, den er begyndt at presse på øh, til at gå ind af nu. Kan jeg se. Så den er lige vendt. And according to Thomas experience, that is exactly what it takes. The underwater cameras now show quite a big fish. A small one, right around the 40 centimeter size limit. Not the big one we saw on the camera, so Thomas releases it again. Cameras are showing activity now. Husk at fiske fluen helt ind her. Den, øh, fiskene de går lige så, lige så tit herinde omkring, hvor jeg går rundt, som, øh, som de går 20 meter ud, altså. Thomas steps forward. And that's probably what spooked this trout. The sea trout are close to shore. Den lidt lange bestemte træk, det er den måde, at øh, den her børstormflue fisker bedst på. Thomas feels a nudge on the fly. Yeah. Come on. Ooh, what? Ah, what?
kan lige lade løslinen ind på, på hjulet her. Den tog lige 4 meter foran mig, den her. Men i hvert fald en tyk fisk, det er helt sikkert. En rigtig god kondi, kan jeg se. Jeg kan få den meget op her. Den er sådan lidt gylden på bogen, så den er nok ikke lagt godt. Jeg har mange kræfter, den er altså. Den er ikke helt klar. Det er en flot fisk. Sådan der. Det er sådan helt uh, gul på buen. Den er. Sidder på en børstormsflue her. Det er en fisk, som helt sikkert har været op og gyde i åen herinde på et tidspunkt, men, men ikke sådan lige for nyligt, for den var i rigtig god kondi. Og var begyndt at blive lidt gul på buen, som de bliver, når de går og spiser her øh, frem og tilbage. Så kalder vi dem elevatorfisk. De er lidt op i åen og lidt ude i fjorden. Water is less than four degrees in the early spring. In this cold water, sea trout are not very active, and there's not much prey either. Usually, small schools of sand eels, stickleback, and sculpin. The underwater camera is placed right in front of where Thomas is fishing and shows nothing but a few bait fish. The water's nice and clear with only a slow current. Thomas plans much of his fishing according to the tide. Der har en stor tro på, at fiskene kommer lige i vandskiftet. Og så har vi vel 20 minutter, en halv time at fisk på dem i. Det har man ikke været sagt, at man kan fange fisk øh, før eller efter. Altså. Men øh, det er gerne det, at det lige kører. The tide has great influence on life close to the shores. Every 24 hours have two high tides and two low tides. Within six hours, the tide changes from low to high. Here shown in fast forward. The current has great impact on fishing in tidal channels, but also along the open shore. High and low tides are controlled by the sun and especially the moon, which makes it possible to predict the tides, well, at least in theory. The wind is also a major factor, and it's a good idea to check online to get a forecast of the tides. Fishing is usually best just as the tide turns. Whether it's from high to low or vice versa depends on where you're fishing. Thomas usually plans his fishing to coincide with the turning tide fishing for just an hour as the tide turns. During these filming sessions, he's forced to fish much longer. The day before, Thomas saw marine worms right here, which is why he uses worm imitations, a bluish on the dropper and a light one on the point. He retrieves the flies in long pulls. Suveræne de her og bølger her fisk i, vil jeg så sige. Når alt kommer til det, så, så håber vi bare, at fisken er der. Så skal de nok tage. And the fish are here. Far more than Thomas ever dreamt of. Vi 
We counted at least 24 sea trout in this school, which just passed Thomas. But not one fish is tempted by the flies and the school returns. The fish are simply circulating in front of him and must have seen his flies several times. We weren't aware of the sea trout during the fishing. Our film was not checked until some days later. So Thomas is not acting on what the cameras are showing and cannot see the fish, even though they're quite close. Caster de der 18, 20 meter, fiskene de står inden for de første 10. Og så godt. Arbejde lidt mere så og fundet en 3-4 meter længere på kastet, men så øh, bliver man også hurtigere træt. Det er slet ikke nødvendigt. Yes! Oh. Du ser, de stod helt inden foran. The sea trout quickly return. Oh, der venter noget. Så er de her. Så er der fisk. Så er der en. Det var sjovt, den var op og vente. Nej, <laughs> der var jeg ved at få flugt i hovedet. Den falder altså af, den her. <laughs> Men... Øh... <laughs> The trout keeps circulating in front of us and it doesn't take much to spook them. Here it's just the fly line landing that spooks them. A few minutes later, they're back and see more active.
Thomas spots a sea trout on the surface. Der var en mere der. Der var en lige der. Ja, så er den der. <laughs> den øh, kom til mænd over to børstrumsflugen, helt oppe i, i overfladen her. Den er en af dem, der skal ud igen. Den sidder på den hvide flue. We fished for about six hours. For Thomas, it was just another day of fishing. He caught a couple of small sea trout and had contact with a few more. Both fish were caught between 11 a.m. and noon, just as the tide turned. Thomas estimated that he had fished to a couple of small schools of four to five fish in the turning tide. He was most surprised when we showed him the film afterwards and he could see that he'd been fishing to a big school of fish. It wasn't until late in the day as low tide approached that the fish seemed to disperse. Some species of marine worms hatch around full moon in the spring. Other species are controlled by other unknown factors when they emerge from the sand to spawn. This film was made on a spring day where the large blue marine worm was hatching. During hatching, the worms are preyed upon by both seagulls and sea trout. Common species of marine worms are olive or brown. Thomas is fishing a seven to eight centimeter long imitation. Once again, we've deployed our cameras, this time on quite low water. Shortly after, a decent sea trout passes by out there. Thomas retrieves the fly in long strokes, so the fly moves gently up and down. Oi! Da var derfor en fisk der. Jeg slapper altså lige sit tag i, i fluen der, da jeg gav tilslag. Det var godt nok ærgerligt. Men jeg, jeg fik nu ikke set, hvor stor den var, så... Så tror jeg, at jeg deler den ene. Der. 
Jeg er meget uden om, mand. Det er godt, det her. Åh, oh, det er godt. Her kommer vi bare. Det er i hvert fald en flot blankfisk. Uh, hvad? Det er en fisk på 60 cm eller sådan noget. A nice, shiny sea trout, but still a little lean after spawning. So Thomas releases it. A few weeks later, we're back on the inlet. Thomas is fishing a small, light shrimp imitation. The water is warmer and the shrimps are coming in. Shrimps are one of the most important food items for sea trout. Here is a bottom-dwelling species. It doesn't swim often and prefers to walk around on the bottom. Like all other species, this one escapes backwards with a lightning fast stroke of the tail. Sometimes they submerge themselves completely in the sand, sometimes partially. Gamaras is another small crustacean which is extremely important to the sea trout. The preferred habitat is in the vegetation, but they also swim freely. The same goes for isopods, here together with a shrimp. The camera flash reveals some incredible colors. This species of shrimp sometimes hides in the vegetation, but prefers to swim freely, making it easy prey for sea trout. Once again, we see how fast a shrimp can escape. When imitating this behavior, the fly is retrieved in short, fast pulls. When a shrimp fly is retrieved fast on a normal retrieve, it doesn't behave much like a real shrimp, but it's important that it imitates shrimp properly when sinking, as the sea trout often strikes on the drop. Thomas is using a long, smooth retrieve. Our underwater camera shows three good sea trout. We also see a larger fish. Jeg tror ikke, at det... Jeg tror ikke, det var en kæmpe. Åh, 
så får vi lige at se den her fine fisk her. Den er i hvert fald 40 cm, så den er sådan set stor nok til at tage med hjem. Men jeg tror, vi får flere i dag, så, så derfor der, der tror jeg, vi lader den gå. The fish was close, so Thomas moves away. Oh yeah. Det var sgu en efterfører der, så. Det ser ud til at være fint, den her. Det tog godt nok meget tungt. I de første par sekunder var det ligesom, det var bare en tankplante. Den er god tyk, den her fisk. Den er helt gul på buen og går hen og spiser rejer. Den smager godt, det er helt sikkert, så den tror jeg, vi skal have i aften. Oj! Har altså lige lidt problemer med at kroge fisken ordentligt nu. Så. Du kan være, man skulle bruge en hurtig indtægt i her. Lange, rolige indtag. Thomas is trying different techniques. Så. Så. Ja. Støj, den falder i den her. Satans. Cameras show big but lean sea trout. Yes! Der var en, man har størrelse på. Det var i hvert fald en god kamp, den gav den fisk her, det er helt sikkert. Ah. 14 dage, så kan man ikke se, at den har været oppe og gyde. Så lad os håbe, at der er flere derude. Det var altså lige kaliber, lige stand her. Det er nu, der pludselig nogle fisk har med lidt størrelse på. <laughs> det var fluen, den landede simpelthen, og så nåede jeg ikke engang at tage fat i, øh, i linen for at tage ind. Ej, det er godt det her, mand. Men er i hvert fald samme størrelse, den her. Den er noget større.
Nu stikker den sgu af. Uh, den er på vej den vej nu. Den er så tyk. Den ser noget tykkere ud, ikke? Den er også større ud. Ja, den er meget tyk over ryggen. Det er en men den er i hvert fald 2,5 kilo, 3 kilo. Det er en, øh, en fisk i god kort i den her i hvert fald, det er helt sikkert. Øh, som går over her og går for rejer. Og en rigtig super kamp gav den. Det var sådan her, de skulle være i størrelse alle sammen. Og den har også taget en rejeflue. Og det er altså lige nu her, rejerne er begyndt at komme. Once again, Thomas is fishing his shrimp imitation, but prey is abundant now in the middle of the spring. Besides shrimp, there are plenty of sculpin and stickleback. Sometimes schools of herring come in close. Usually, sand eel is the dominant food source during the spring along the open shore, and their presence is crucial to bring in sea trout. Sand eel appear both as individuals and in schools. During the spring, garfish make their appearance. They spend the winter in deeper water and spawn in low water during the spring. Thomas is after sea trout, but it's very common to target garfish. We're on the open shore on a stony point. We have a camera quite close to shore and immediately see garfish. Garfish are spawning in the area too. Thomas is fishing right in front of the camera. Ah, I'm going to go to the I'm going to go to the i to the Ja, det er større hornfisk i hvert fald. Der er mange, som fisker horn. Hvis, hvis, hvis man virkelig vil fange hornfisk, så, så er der mange, som tager stangen ind øh, ned under her, og så bare hævler ind. Men øh, jeg synes ikke, det er, det er meget mere effektivt og sætte hastigheden op, når jeg fisker efter de her rundfisk her. Så jeg synes faktisk, at hvis man ligesom kan få fluen ned i vandet og så nogle lange eventræk, det, det er lige så godt. Der behøver ikke at, at fulde spil på, altså.
The vegetation is full of small baitfish and our camera further out shows the occasional sand eel. And two large sea trout. Der er godt nok kommet noget flyt i, i vandmasserne derude. Øj, en øret! Øj, en havøret, der kommer der. Kom så, tag den så. Prøv lige at se der. Så, tag så. Kom så, kom så, kom så. Øj, er det dår. Tag den så, for satan da. Øj, <laughs> nej, nej. Sådan en fisk her, du. Og den var bare med helt op efter fluen, kan jeg godt lade dig. Øj, for satan. Tanda. Hvorfor tager den ikke, mand? Den var altså god, den der. Det var en 70 cm fisk. Så tager jeg sådan her. Hvad skal jeg gøre? Den lagde hovedet helt på siden. 20 cm under overfladen. En fisk på en 3-4 kilo, lige her, foran mig. Øh, det er fuldstændig havblik og, og spritklart vand, altså. Øh. Vi må lige prøve at se, om vi kan finde på noget sjovt her. Prøv at fiske dybt. Og få den til at komme igen, altså. Der er ingen tvivl om, den er der. Ja, der er rundfisk. Det var godt nok imponerende, det der. Det er... Lige en lille smule mere bølge og vind her, så havde den taget klokken rent, den der. Men øh, den er der. Så... Ej, og vi har godt haft den store der. Thomas spots some porpoises over the reef and has quite often experienced that sea trout follow in their wake. And that is certainly true this time. Watch this school of sea trout coming in. Here they are, chasing prey. Let's see that again. Der var en havrød. En lille en. Øh, lige omkring 40 cm. Og der kommer marsvinene lige her bagved, så den er... Som så tit, så... Så er den inde sammen med de her marsvin. De er helt inde nu, så marsvin. Prøv lige at se dem. Prøv at se. Øj, hvor er det flot. Ej, prøv at se dem. De er så, de er virkelig fest nu. Jeg tror sgu, det er rundfisk. There are definitely sea trout around now, and some of them are quite big. A 
a beautiful sight of three sea trout cruising slowly around. Den er fin. Den er i hvert fald stor nok. Har vi altså nørret her, der tog lige midt imellem hornfestene. Det er... Det er helt fint. Ja, det, er. det er altså en af dem, der smager godt, den her. Sådan en sommer- eller forårsfisk her. Det. Ja, så er jeg lige på den lille rej her. As we mentioned at the beginning of the film, sight fishing is an important skill when fly fishing, and we've seen Thomas cast to sighted fish several times. Here's another example. Ej, det er lige til venstre for mig der. I en fisk, der venter der. Kom så. Kom så. Uh, ja, den var fint, du. Og det var altså bare tæt på. Ja! Nej, <laughs> jeg mistede den. Satans også, mand. Så en havre, som, øh, som lige var oppe og vende i en vivel. Så lå jeg fluen synke foran den. <laughs> ja, så godt nok... Øh, godt nok fisker. Og så har jeg en hornfisk i, i anden træk. Øh, jeg er lidt imponeret det. Jeg vidste faktisk øh, en fin hav her. Ja, nu var den ikke så stor, som jeg lige umiddelbart regnede med. Jeg så hele fisken, og det var en fisk på halvanden kilo eller sådan noget. Og så i næste kast samme sted der, så, så sidder der en hornfisk. De går simpelthen sammen derude. Det er i hvert fald helt klart bevis for. We fished over a reef with some current and visibility changed a lot during the day, sometimes from one minute to another. Generally, visibility was poor from the morning until 10 a.m. The tide changed around 11 a.m. and the sea trout came in between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. Visibility was clearly affected by the current, not by wind and waves, which we almost didn't see all day. Åh, det er en god fisk. Nej! Sæt! Jeg var rigtig god. Fishing kan være rigtig god i den tidlige sommer, før vandet temperaturen rører til over 17-18 degrader. Der er plenty meget food. Skulpin, stickleback, shrimp og mysis. Mysis are present almost all year round, but they increase in numbers over summer and autumn. 
There are several species, and the small are crustaceans about one and a half to five centimeters long. Some species hover motionless around vegetation, and others move around in vast numbers, looking almost cloud-like in the shallow water. Over reefs and points with a good current, it's possible to catch sea trout all day during summer. But generally, fishing is best at dusk, through the night and in the first few hours after dawn. We're going to fish at different spots. First, a point with a strong current. We started in the evening and used a kayak to haul our gear and deploy the underwater cameras. The camera shows a small cod, but no sea trout. The current is strong, which is perfect for this spot. Klaus intends to fish through the night. Earlier, we sent out a diver to shoot during the night on a different location, but a typical one with stones, vegetation and sand. The large sand eels bury themselves in the sand. They're spooked by the light. Between the rocks and vegetation, we can see myriads of shrimp and gamaras. They're very active during the night. And here, a sea trout is chasing prey over the reef. Here, a sea trout is waiting between the rocks. It looks as though it's resting. We've seen clear evidence of sea trout foraging in quite shallow water during the night. The water's around three feet deep here. Klaus has been fishing all night and only caught a small sea trout. Dawn often provides good chances and the camera has caught one too. Storm got loose. Klaus is fishing a big shrimp fly. <sighs> the camera shows no fish. Oh, oh, oh. Perfect for a long hour. Klaus and Thomas take a break before they take one last turn. The camera now shows some mullet but still no sea trout.
Lige herude foran mig, der, der, er sådan, der, går, der går strømmen ud i sådan en spids, fordi det bliver lavet. Så lige en kastelæng nu, det der. Ja, de er. Det kast der. Det skal give den. Klaus feels a nudge on the fly. Så. Ja. Endelig. Endelig, endelig, endelig. Men den var også lige, hvor den skulle være. Midt på revet. Så må vi se. Ja, fin fisk. Ja, det er sådan en... Det er ikke en 2 kilos fisk, men halvanden kilo eller sådan noget, jeg tror. Par 50 cm. Dejligt, dejligt, dejligt. Så. Ah, det er en dejlig fisk. Ja. Må lægge lige mærke til farven på fluen. Ja. Ja, jo, jo. Sådan skal det være. Ja, jeg tænkte også lige, at den gik i overfladen. Det var gønt på alt det der. Herligt, herligt, herligt. Det er faktisk ved at vente en hel nat på. Det ser ud. Now we will try another good summer location. A varied stretch with good current and several small stone reefs. Klaus is once again fishing his pink shrimp fly. Så er det her på ydersiden af stenene, det sneer. Mest det sneer. Jeg har lige have dækket af med nogle korte kast først, lige på ydersiden af stenene her. De kan stå rigtig tæt på land. The camera is placed just 20 meters out, overlooking a small stone reef. The first fish it catches is a small sea trout. Senere skal vi nok få lagt alt det lige nu, vi kan, men lige allerførst skal vi lige have dækket af her. På de første meter. Så vi ikke skræmmer noget fisk med alle vores vaden og plasken. Det er tit sådan med sommerfiskeri, at selv inden det bliver mørkt, så står der standfisk på de gode pladser. De flytter sig ikke ret meget, så hvis man er heldig, så fanger man en. Og så fanger man sikkert ikke mere, før at, at mørket kommer, hvor de rigtig flytter sig. Man skal altid få det affisket grundigt. Generelt så tager jeg fluen sådan lidt, lidt rask ind. Det er jo bevægelsen i fluen, der, der tiltrækker fisken. Og jeg kan bedst lige en flue, der fisker lidt hurtigt igennem vandet. Det synes jeg har den største effekt. Øhm, og det er egentlig ligegyldigt, om det er sommer eller vinter. Så fisker jeg dem lidt, lidt hurtigt. Ofte fisker jeg faktisk med, med stangen op under armhulen, og så med to hænder, hvor man trækker ind. Det kan tit lure en fisk, som ikke har ville tage på den traditionelle fæson. Og cirka hver tiende kast, der trækker jeg ind på på den hurtige måde. Og det kan være nogle dage kan det være de eneste kast, at man har, har reaktion på. 
Jeg har stort set aldrig oplevet, at en langsom flue er, er det eneste rigtige. Selvom der er dybt herude, så fisker vi alligevel med en flydeligne og en flue, der går tæt under overfladen. Det er ingen problem for fiskene at se den og, og få fat i den, selvom de står måske to meter ned. Og når det nu bliver mørkt, så skifter vi over til flue, der fisker helt op i overfladen. Og de virker stadigvæk også ud over ret dybt vand. Når løber en svag strømkasse i sydpå, det er okay. Skulle jeg vælge, så må den heller løbe nordpå, men øh, bare der løber noget, så er det godt nok. Det er lige herude i hotspottet. Det er her, det skal sne snart. The camera shows sea trout, apparently foraging. Ja, der var den. Yes. Åh, oh, det er en fin fisk. Det er faktisk en rigtig fin fisk. Det er skønt, jo. Jeg tror faktisk, at jeg kunne ikke se i fluen overhovedet. Vi skal lige have fat her. Den er for stor til halen, den her. Sådan. Yay! Yeah! <laughs> Sådan. A nice summer fish. 63 centimeters long and well over 3 kilos. Det er bare i orden. Og bare fuldstændig inhaleret fluen der. films we've used underwater cameras to uncover some of the mysteries of saltwater fishing and the secrets of the sea trout. The cameras have recorded countless hours and the project has spanned over several years. 
Sometimes we've placed the cameras simply walking them out with waders on, and sometimes we've used float tube, kayak or boat to place the cameras where we wanted them, and always within fishing distance in the areas where we have fished. One important thing we learned is that there are always far more sea trout around than even the most experienced fishermen thought. Consider that the cameras have a limited field of view, from a few feet to maximum 35 feet. Countless times our films have shown sea trout where a fisherman has caught nothing. Each time several other sea trout must have been present outside the camera's field of view. Sea trout that must have been within reach of our fishermen. It happens far more often than we think. Through our underwater recordings, we have learned how sea trout behave where we fish and seen it from the sea trout's point of view. We've seen how they gather in small schools to forage. We've seen how sea trout not always move from deep to low water and back again at low temperatures. Sometimes they simply remain in shallow water but only seem interested in our lures and flies for short periods of time. It's exciting whether or not these fish can be triggered to take a fly. The sea trout's metabolism is low in cold water, but sometimes the right techniques can trigger a take, even if the trout is not actively feeding. The warmer the water, the more the sea trout feed, and the fish are much more active in warmer water too. Most of the time we fish together with our very experienced Thomas Hansen on locations that he knows very well. He helped place the cameras on the hot spots where he often catches fish. Countless trout have passed the cameras and yet we've only seen trout actually holding in front of the cameras a few times. Usually one or several trout simply pass by at a steady pace. Very often trout have passed the cameras obviously foraging yet we only saw them once. Whether they really are foraging or on their spawning run, we can't say. Sometimes sea trout have been in a motionless hover. This often happens between the turning tides and of course in very cold water and even during summer nights. Usually the cameras have shown no fish for long periods of time followed by one to two hours where sea trout suddenly come into view. These periods often coincide with the turning tide. Whether the turn from high or low tide is best depends on the location. Some locations are best at high tide, others shortly after the turn to low tide. Most saltwater fishermen have wondered how the fish move around, in the deep or just under the surface or simply swimming in the middle of the water column. On the inlets, our cameras have been placed in shallow water, a little more than one meter deep. Here, the sea trout stayed close to the bottom. On open shores, only a few trout stayed close to the bottom. Here, a colored fish getting ready to spawn. Usually, sea trout gather in the middle of the water column on the open shore and our cameras have never been placed deeper than in two meters of water. Close to the shore, trout usually swim freely in the middle of the water column both during summer and winter. While we use locations that Thomas Hansen knows well, these locations are no better than any others. With a fisherman as experienced and skilled as Thomas, we could easily have chosen any other good location and still gained the same experiences. Our underwater cameras have shown exciting and surprising scenarios and we've gained a rare insight into the underwater world of the sea trout. We've gained new inspiration and experiences, yet we have uncovered only a fraction of the sea trout's secrets. Yeah. 
Åh, oh, det er en god fisk. Nej! Ah.